Hello, welcome back to my tech fan. I'm Igor and I have another procurement filament for the review. And this time it is PA11, the nylon reinforced with carbon fibers. And also I got teal sheet PA nylon. This is a special uh, two-sided sheet for nylon or polyamide filaments. And uh, I'm very curious how it works. It is very important to remember that uh, clean it only with the butter. Never use isopropyl alcohol or adstone on, on it. This filament usually arrives with the uh, glue stick, but I don't have to use it with this type of the sheet. Uh, if you are using the regular uh, textured or satin sheet, in that case, definitely you will need this glue stick as a separated agent. About this uh, material, uh, I check on their website uh, uh, the PA11. They claim they are, it is uh, tough, more temperature and impact resistant filament and uh, it has less tendency to warping compared to the PA12 filaments. Uh, now every nylon filament uh, will uh, absorb moisture from the air and uh, what I usually do is that uh, I store this in vacuum bags but when I take it out uh, I print from a filament dryer. Any cheap filament dryer will do the job to keep it dry during the printing and immediately after the printing I am placing it in some receivable vacuum bag with some silica grain inside. If you print it on open printer or you don't store it properly, uh, in that case uh, according to their website you will need at least 90 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours to dry the filament and uh, those cheap fil uh, filament dryers cannot do this. Okay, So if you don't want to dry it in the oven or buy some expensive filament dryers, uh, try to follow these instructions. Uh, usually I'm doing mechanical tests, and, uh, but there is one thing what I cannot test so far uh, and that's uh, this material is uh, resistant to most of the solvents and this is something what I will not test so keep in mind so this may be a very big advantage even if their mechanical properties are weaker compared to the PC brand carbon fibers. Uh, I will do those regular uh, mechanical tests which I usually do on this channel and uh, they are comparable with each other. Uh, some of them uh, depend a little bit more from the environment, temperature, moisture or something like that. Uh, in that case I will reprint those test objects from uh, PC Blend 2, the carbon fiber version, because I want to have them in side-by-side -side comparison. Usually that's the creep test, uh, temperature test and also that uh, new bending test, which I think it is very useful and give us great information. Uh, overall I know that a nylon usually creeps so probably uh, it, it deforms during the constant higher load and uh, well, we'll see that will be tested too but now let's see what's in box and do some printing. Not for the filling like the regular satin sheet but of course uh, we have a warning don't clean it with the appropriate alcohol and of course this is for PA nylon. No changes on the spool, only it is very interesting, very nice uh, grey color and I can see it is carbon inside. Very nice vacuum packaging with some silica grain inside. Already mentioned this sheet is very similar to the Prusa's regular satin sheet and I will start with a similar live Z but of course I have to set it again during the first printing. The bag is very sealable so don't forget to cut it above the sealing line. I will start with temperature tar from 295 to 275 but later all the subjects I will print on 285 degrees Celsius and probably 110 on the bed. And this is what I really like with the Prusament filaments, they have great nice rolling. So because of the carbon fibers this is also very brittle filament, with the filament itself, you will see if the object is also brittle. But after the printing I will not lock the end of the filament between these holes but I will use some stick tape to glue it to the spool. The printing will be inside this uh, ikea -like enclosure and also I will use the filament dryer during the printing because I don't want it to absorb moisture from the air. The printing started successfully, this is the first layer and it looks like it has a very similar Z offset like uh, textured or the regular satin sheet. By default the first layer was at 90 degrees Celsius and now it's heating up the bed to 115, wow. And uh, now I'm printing the first element on 295 degrees Celsius and then 285 and 275 will be the last one. And 
and it happened again when I'm printing on 295 or close to the 300 degrees Celsius when the part cooling fan is on I get this uh, error temperature so I'm reducing so I'm printing only the temperature tower from 285 to 275 well let's try to remove the object and it's coming down very easily and I'm reprinting the temperature tower from 285 to 275 and I set the maximal part cooling to 10% instead of 20. The second start is good too. Interesting, I can see a lot of uh, string filament stick to the nozzle and probably this will result more stringing when printing this filament. The bridging is okay. This is the last element of 275 degrees Celsius. Don't be confused, you can see 175 and 95, but I don't have the elements named 200. Printing is finished a few seconds ago, and I know that I have a great bed adhesion. Absolutely no warping, and the temperature inside the enclosure was 45 degrees Celsius. The pad cooled down. Perfect. Well, if there would be no stringing, this could be a perfect temperature tower. Okay, the bridging is not so perfect, but uh, it's also great. And uh, this is fantastic overhang, great bottom layer and curved surfaces. Well, I can see a few strings here and there, but I decided to print all this object at once and uh, I hope it will be finished correctly. But it looks like I was too optimistic because uh, some of the objects start with the warping and another hit them and they removed from the bed. And usually these are those longer objects because don't forget I have here a maximum number of the perimeters and this kind of objects has bigger tendency to warp. So I will see if at least some of the objects will be finished, maybe one, one and a half millimeters more. But then I will stop the printing and print them one by one maybe, adding some big brim to them. This is very interesting behavior, uh, so from time to time it kicks from the bed the object and then uh, it starts from, I don't know, 2 or 3 millimeters, but even then uh, it sticks to the bed, so the adhesion is great, only the problem is this tendency to warping. But I, I have already now uh, 4 successful objects, I will start the printing and I will reprint them one by one, but adding some big brim. <laughs> so these objects were kicked from the bed. And these are started with the printing from approximately 2-3 millimeters. And those uh, which are printed, they stick very good. Slowing down the printing and adding a brim give me successful printing. So this one is for the torque test. Layer attention test object. Uh, looks great and don't have so much stringing between two objects as I expected. Object for temperature test. For the bending test, and it's perfectly straight, almost finished. For ISO the impact test, for screw creep test. And these three objects are reprinted, they are for the bending creep and layer attention test, and the reason I reprinted them that they will be tested after annealing. I already mentioned that this filament is very brittle and I'm afraid that it will break if I use these holes, so I better like to use this stick tape to lock the end of the filament. Theoretically this Prusa bag is also resealable and you can place it with some silica glue inside, but for nylon I definitely like better to use some vacuum bags. These four objects will be annealed and I want to check some dimensional accuracy. This is in y direction, approximately 10.28, in x direction, 80.46, and in z direction, 37.89, 37.89. And just for curiosity, I want to measure the start weights. This one will be for annealing. 3.416 this will be the regular one 3.420 
and this with the V will be the water version. I'll explain that later. 3.408. Oven preheated to 90 degrees. Well, actually, on Prosa website, I couldn't find any information about annealing their nylon, probably because this is a very new product. So I will just use some average values I found on the internet, and that's uh, 3 hours or 90 degrees Celsius on some flat surface. After three hours, they cooled down in the oven, and now let's check the dimensions. I can already see that they deform a little bit. For example, this uh, C test object for the creep test, uh, these two reference surfaces are closer to each other because here I can see it almost touch each other, these two uh, points. Uh, but never mind, so I will need with the creeping the difference between two days. But let's measure the dimensions. So this is in y direction, 10.25. Hmm. 80.38. What I notice in x and y direction they shrink and in z direction it expands. So here probably we will see a bigger values. 37.88. Okay, this is one measured dimension, but in x and y direction, as I expected, it shrinked. But in z direction it also shrinks, but usually I am expecting here that uh, it expands a little bit. But basically it is very close to the zero. All objects are printed, these are even annealed, but uh, we have to discuss one important thing before I start the mechanical testing. You are already familiar that nylon absorb moisture from the air. That's true not only for filament, but also for printed objects. And in wet state they are weaker. So I will wait uh, at least 10 days. Uh, these objects will be uh, stored on open air, 50% relative humidity approximately. And with this, uh, they will be closer to that stable state, and only then I will start the mechanical testing. And during these 10 days, uh, one test object will be stored in the water, just to satisfy my curiosity. And for comparison, these few objects are printed from PC blend carbon fiber version. And now after two weeks on approximately 20-25 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity, they should be very close to that uh, stable state and they are ready for mechanical testing. I mark them, these from the carbon fiber are marked with the golden lines, the annealed version with the silver line and these without lines are the regular versions. And of course this one is in the water now, two weeks. Before I start the bending test, uh, let's measure the weight. So this was in the water, only I took it out maybe 10 minutes ago, just a little to dry. 3.567. This is the unhealed version. 3.427. And this is the regular P11. 3.433 and this is PC blend but I didn't measure it before 3.617 tests are a pulling test and these test objects are printed in horizontal position and the smallest cross section error is 4 by 4 millimeters Interesting break, not exactly on the smallest coaxial area, but very close. But now let's check the layer adhesion. The layer adhesion test with vertically printed objects, and I'm starting with versions which are not annealed. And now annealed PA11. I'm a little bit confused now, uh, not bad layer adhesion, but uh, they didn't broke on the smallest cross section area, so they broke very unequally, as you can see, almost three types of the breaks, with four test objects. And now two sided shear stress, the diameter of this test object is 5 mm, and usually carbofibers really helps in this kind of test. And the test objects was shared correctly on those two cross-section areas, this meaning three pieces. This is my three-point bending test. This is between supports is 50 mm and I will place these loads on the test objects 1.25, 2.5, 5 and 10 kg. And I will measure the deformation under this load after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. And the reason for this you can see on the screen, this is one minute speed up video 
and as you can see this test object continuously deforms during this period. Now let's start the testing with regular PA11. 1.25 kilograms and side by side deformation under 1.25, 2.5, 5 and 10 kilograms everything after 30 seconds. P11 this was in the water for two weeks. PC blend carbon fiber. And again deformations under 1.25, 2.5 kilograms, 5 and 10 kilograms after 30 seconds. But very important I added this one here after 60 seconds. Visually I cannot see any permanent deformation on them but I will analyze the numbers in the results part. And now my regular torque or twist test. Test object is the diameter of 6 mm. This side goes into the vise and this into torque meter. And what to record the load at 90 degree angle and the maximal torque. 1.6, oops. 1.7 was the peak. Well, interesting, it broke very suddenly, so I didn't expect this. And my island epoch tester with the half kilogram hammer, and I want to see how brittle or tough are these materials. And uh, beside the PA11, I have this test object from the PC brand carbon fiber, uh, just for better side by side comparison. PA11, zero position, PC blend. For the first look, the PC blend is tougher material and it didn't even broke completely, but uh, let's analyze those pictures. The scale, and this is the zero position of the hammer, and this is after breaking the PA11 test object, and this is after breaking the PC blend. And if I measure everything from the zero position, I will get these distances. This is age, but I have to use that in a meter, and I will use this calculation to get the breaking energy in kilojoules per square meters. So between these two, the PC blend is more tough material, but I will show you graph in the results part. And this is my regular creep test. I want to measure the deformation under the constant load and I will measure the distance between these two reference surfaces. This is PA11, annealed version, and this is PC blend. Now I'm placing this 1.25 kg load on them. Hmm, at the first look I can see biggest deformation on carbon fiber PC blend, but uh, let's measure them. For more accurate measuring I'm locking the position so it will not deform. 12.44 And I will measure them every day, but off camera only I will take a picture once a day. So this is day zero and this is day one after 24 hours and pay attention on the left side two nanon objects slowly deforms until the PC blend doesn't. And on fifth day after measuring I place them in preheated oven and uh, they spent here uh, one hour on 50 degrees Celsius and I measured them after this so this was the fifth day and this was after heating. And now removing of the load. And this is the deformation after 10 minutes, the smallest deformation I can see on PC blend and between these two uh, better is the annealed version and here I can see the biggest permanent deformation. And this is my regular compression or how I call it screw creep test. I'm inserting this M5 bolts and nuts from the other side and in the ways I will hold only the nuts and I will tie them with equal load using the torque wrench. And I want to see tomorrow if I can tighten them even more using the same torque. And between measurings they will be stored inside on room temperature. And now after one day let's see if I apply the same torque, if I can additionally tie these bolts. And here you can see them side by side. Uh, the first measuring is already done, it's visible too. But here in footage you can see only the second measuring. And you can notice that the piece blend after the second day almost had no deformation. Basically it was zero. Uh, PA11 uh, every day had a smaller and smaller deformation. And uh, this is the fifth day. And after this I placed them in the oven one hour on 50 degrees Celsius. 
Hey, both case deck had some additional creeping, but smaller on PC blend. And now I temperature test and I think this is another experiment where the PA11 should perform better. So this one is PA11 and this is the PC blend. And I want to record the temperature of the first deformation. Uh, this is just a backup thermometer. The real temperature I will follow with this cooking thermometer. The backup thermometer is also accurate, but it has small delay. I will just speed up a little bit more the first part because nothing interesting happened there. And uh, here I place this reference line so we can easily follow the deformation. And the first deformation I noticed at approximately 160 degrees Celsius at the PC blend, very minimally. And then very suddenly PA11 at approximately 190 degrees Celsius. And when it passed the 200 degrees Celsius, I stop the experiment. Well, interesting situation. I have to check the footage, so which one started with the deformation, but on the PC blend I can see very, very minimal deformation. And the PA is lying down on the silicon pad and I hope it's not sticked. I have to wait until it cools down. Of course, both of them perform great in this test, but uh, definitely I like better the PC blend properties. And it's time to analyze the results, and uh, this Excel table is downloadable from my website. And my Patreon supporters uh, have access to that summary table, so they can compare these results with all those experiments I did earlier. Okay, let's start with the creep test, and this is that raw data, distance between these two reference surfaces, but what we need is difference between two days, and that's what we, can, we see here, and zero means no creeping, and uh, this is the graph, and definitely very nice graph with the PC blend carbon fiber. Now interesting that the both nylon filaments has uh, creeping which didn't stop even on the fifth day and a very big deformation after that uh, 50 degrees Celsius one hour heating. The torque or compression test and uh, these are the measured angles but of course uh, this is the average in this table and this is what can we see here. And again the PC blend stopped with the deformation after second day. Uh, the nylon, it always had uh, deformation which was smaller and smaller and as you can see after 1 hour 50 degrees Celsius heating uh, both had additional creeping basically very similar like on the first day. The tensile test and uh, this uh, data for PC blend carbon fiber is for my uh, previous testing and uh, same with the layer adhesion. So the tensile test is uh, basically very similar so I wouldn't say this is big difference. And the layer adhesion test, uh, well, uh, it is important to mention that with the PC blend, first I had very weak layer adhesion. Maybe it broke approximately 20 kilograms. But uh, in separate video I tested when I completely disabled the fan. Uh, in that case I got a very nice, very good layer adhesion. So this is approximately 50 kilograms. Uh, this is good too. Basically everything about 20 kilograms is acceptable but a very inequally uh, breaking I had here, different uh, position of the breaking and different values, uh, properly with its big dilatation of the temperature during the printing. I'm not sure. The shear stress, uh, basically all uh, both are very acceptable values here. And now that bending test, uh, what we can see in this table is uh, the deformation on these loads, but after 30 seconds. And if I will see only this, uh, PA11 carbon fiber, annealed version is the best. I mean, smaller value is better. The worst is the PC blend carbon fiber, because deformation. But that's why very important is this table, when I measure basically the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. And here we can see a really big difference. See? Uh, watch this, PC blend on biggest load. After 30 seconds, basically it stopped with deformation until this is the uh, water version and uh, continuously deforms even after one minute. Uh, strongest in this test was the PA11, the annealed version. Interesting that it started with the same deformation and then on higher loads uh, we can see bigger difference. And this is the torque or twist test and results for the PC blend are from the previous video. And uh, yes, the P11 carbon fiber was better, stronger in this test, but it broke very suddenly, only after one quarter of the rotations. On the impact test, uh, well, uh, to be honest, I was expecting a little bit better values for the nylon filament, but uh, PC blend was tougher material in this test. Uh, 
and the P11 is brittle compared to the PC brand. The temperature test, uh, interesting situation here. So I noticed the first deformation of the PC blend at approximately 160 degrees Celsius, uh, but it slowly deforms until the P11, it starts very suddenly at approximately 190 degrees Celsius, and uh, in basically a few degrees Celsius, it completely deformed. And these are values I already showed earlier, so the, there is a shrinking in x, y direction of the uh, object after annealing. In z direction, usually it expands, but here I got um, well in, near zero value. And the weight uh, also presented earlier, but uh, what can we see here that uh, even after two weeks, uh, it absorbs very minimal water from the air, both annealed or regular PA11. Uh, the object placed in the water absorb almost 5% of the additional weight, but even this performed quite good in these testings. And now short conclusions, but basically the numbers tells you everything. And from my beard, from the beginning of the video, you can see how long was this uh, testing process. Uh, first about this uh, PA uh, sheet. It works great and uh, on purpose I didn't use a glue stick on it, but with that I could properly get even better layer adhesion. But don't forget to use only PVA based glue stick, which can be cleaned with the butter, uh, because this cannot be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol or uh, other chemicals. I'm not sure how durable is it, I can see some markings on it, but basically this is something that I cannot test in this uh, short time. The time will um, show us. About this uh, nylon PA11 filament. Uh, it is great material basically, uh, I think uh, one of the best, uh, strongest actually, which uh, I tested on, on this channel, but it is not so easy for printing, so especially compared for PC blend carbon fiber version, uh, this is much harder for printing. Basically don't forget, you need a filament dryer, enclosure, high temperatures, and even then uh, if you get some warping, so definitely you can I know, slow down the printing, maybe use a smaller layer height and uh, similar. It doesn't creep so much like uh, other uh, nylon filaments I tested recently, uh, but it creeps. So, so compared to the PC blend, so definitely uh, overall uh, it has better mechanical properties uh, compared to the, this PA11. But uh, don't forget with what, something what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, uh, and also it can be found on their website, that uh, nylon is uh, resistant to a lot of solvents, and maybe this can be advantage compared to the other, let's say even ABS filaments and similar. Um, well, that's it, uh, quite new filament, so uh, I couldn't find too much information about it on the internet. But if you have some additional experience with this, you know, through lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing!